the shuttle they ended up with clearly was a camel. That is, it was a horse designed by a committee, and um, it served no one's purposes. It was a good design. There were some compromises. But do we want to continue to whip NASA for a decision that was made 20 years ago? I'm blessed. I get to uh, walk away from my desk and look at a spaceship. My uh, father worked out here, Gemini Apollo, and the start of the shuttle. It's always been very admirable to help put men in space. Space flight is a, is a unique environment. It uh, starts with uh, the lack of apparent gravity. When you're taking away your environment now that, that my system was not designed to be in. If you have all the money in the world, you cannot simulate zero gravity. <laughs> so, and that oftentimes presents the biggest challenges when you get up there is dealing with that and operating in that environment. Flight prep, 150 Up there, you're on a different time. The sun goes up and down every hour and a half. And depending upon uh, your kind of work and sleep schedule, you have a different form of time up there. Right now, what we can identify is that there are risks, both for things such as bone loss, muscle loss, equilibrium changes, blood pressure changes, heart muscle changes. Um, we're trying to see um, what those risks are. The cardiovascular system, uh, it doesn't have to move blood uphill, it doesn't have to move blood out of my feet to get up to my heart. And bones, after a long period of time, they, they become more porous and they start to go away. The loss of calcium from the bones, um, it begins immediately, but it continues probably at the rate of about 1% of your long bone calcium per month. In the middle ground, uh, things that uh, occur over uh, a week or two weeks, and that is the loss of muscle, because I don't need to use muscle to move around. I walk with my hands instead of with my feet up there. Everything takes longer to do when you first get up there, whether it be going to the bath bathroom or preparing and eating your meal or ex getting ready to exercise on a, on a bicycle that we carry up there or, or anything. If I'm sitting here in this room and I were to drop a pencil, I would begin looking on the floor and the tops of the tables and the tops of the chairs in the room, but in zero gravity, the pencil could be floating right here behind my head and I could spend you know, minutes looking for it until some other crewmate says, well, turn and look, it's right there. Sleeping up there is really pleasant. They advertise water beds as being so good because there are no pressure points. Well, in zero gravity, there are absolutely no pressure points. <laughs> and it's, uh, you, know, you can just close your eyes and drift off uh, very, very easily. Okay, well, Jack, fairly sharp with north on it. Uh, you guys on the ground? Okay, uh, going home? Pilots have to be able to land the space shuttle despite changes in their vestibular system. They may be confused about up and down and, and whether they're rotating or translating forward and backwards, so their inner ear may be uh, off. They can't fly as, as well by the seat of the pants because their seat feels different. And so there's a real adaptation when you get back down on the ground. You feel like you weigh about 300 pounds when you come back down and land, so you're gonna notice the guys moving a little bit sluggishly, a little bit heavily, particularly this flight where they're at the end of 14 days of being up there. We've had a few people that needed to be assisted. We've had a few people that needed to have some fluids administered. How close are we to an edge here? Uh, are we going to have problems? Personally, I was confident that I could egress myself. I, I wouldn't claim it would be pretty. In fact, it would may have been a stumble and fall and crawl and get back up and go again. But that's why we practice so much in the launch and entry suit. Well, my name is Robin Brack. Uh, I work in the crew escape uh, department. 
And what we do in Crew Escape is we take care of all the life support equipment that the astronauts need to fly in space. What we look for in the equipment is to make sure that everything that's in the suit mechanically is functioning properly. So if they had a rapid decompression, let's say, the suit would do its job, uh, save the crewman's life, um, and they would be able to survive. If an astronaut was getting ready for launch, the first thing he would do was he'd put on his diaper. This diaper is just like a pampers diaper that a little kid would wear, except it's made for big adults. The next thing what he would do is put on his Patagonia underwear. It's a liquid cooled underwear. Lay on your back on the floor with your feet above your head for five and a half hours when you're on the launch pad out there. And I guarantee you in short order, you'll wish you were wearing a diaper if you have no other means of uh, relieving yourself. We pull on a, a anti-G suit, and then over that comes the, the rest of the space suit, which is a, uh, a pressure suit, essentially. We call it the pumpkin suit, right? It's uh, orange, and uh, uh, international orange for rescue, so they can find you if you ever had to bail out. Good. Okay. Okay. Green apple. You got You're one. saving okay. somebody's life, and if something should happen, and it's very important. Inside the parachute, besides the parachute, our life raft and survival water and radios and everything you'd need to survive in the ocean, hopefully long enough for them to find you. There are scenarios that you can paint where the shuttle uh, comes down intact uh, but can't make a landing strip. And uh, you essentially were writing the crew off in that case previously. But now uh, we have the option to at least uh, bail out. Feel super. Thanks. You're Look. not going to fly. Huh? No, not tonight. Coward. Americans want humans in space. It is part of our psyche. One of the problems with manned spaceflight is as soon as you put people on a spacecraft, you change the mission and the purpose of the spacecraft. Its primary mission then becomes getting them back alive. There is no scientific uh, finding from the space program obtained by humans, including the return of uh, samples from the moon, that could not be obtained uh, more cheaply and more safely by robotic spacecraft. So uh, yes, I can understand the symbolic value of uh, sending humans uh, up into space, but uh, it is certainly not essential for science. Good evening and welcome to Mission Status Center. It's fantastic. <laughs> it is floating. The United States has spent two thirds of its space budget on manned spaceflight, and yet all of the real payoff from spaceflight has come from the unmanned vehicles, from the scientific satellites and probes, from the weather satellites, the communication satellites, the Earth resources satellites. So, again, instead of the astronauts allowing us to do things in space that are exciting and helpful, the astronauts are a burden on the program.